Yeah, yeah. Uh, th thanks, T. Uh, good evening to members of the media. Um, I think it's it's only proper to start by congratulating uh, Esperance, uh, beating us over uh, two legs and uh, on both one nil score lines. Uh, it reflects for me that they deserve to be in the final. So let me take this opportunity to congratulate them for two good results that. Uh, that put them in the final of the Champions League and uh, I can only wish them well moving forward against, uh, excuse me, against al -Akhli. Um Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult feeling. Um, we've been, uh, we've been talking about improving our performances to give us our to give ourselves a chance to win. Um, and I just looked at at um, even some of the data. Last time you asked me about data and I looked at it today, I said, but I hope somebody's gonna ask me about the data today. Uh, because I mean, it's, it's if, if, if I felt that we dominated in Tunisia, I don't know what other narrative to use today. But these type of games are, and, and I said to the players that these type of games are about margins. And uh, I knew, and we all knew uh, through the analysis and the work that we did that the goal from either side would either come from a moment of brilliance in and around the opposition box or a mistake. And, and in uh, both legs we committed uh, two very, very big mistakes. Uh, in, in Tunisia, it came from a throw-in. We didn't overload and they found the circulation and they made the run from deep. After the striker pulled out to the centre-back and it is a, a movement that we knew. Uh, last night, uh, I, I spent some time and Mario actually, Mario Masha was reminding me because I spent some time watching their game against Etoile. And um, they created three or four chances similar to the goal that they scored today, actually. And uh, this morning when we were doing the pre-match talk, I, I showed the clips, but this is football, you know. They, then they get a goal kick. And um, we, we then go on and concede a, a very, very soft goal. But... We tried our best against a very experienced team in this competition. Um, and now it's just time for me to, to stick very close to the players because they are the ones that got us this far. Um, and they are the ones that have helped us to, to be the team that we are. And I think um, more than anything, it's time to, to, to make them feel how, how loved they are. And uh, and stick as close to them as 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 we possibly can. Thank you, Coach. Uh, colleagues, it's the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, your name and publication, please. I think there's a hand there. Uh, yeah. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, sir. Um, yeah. Sorry. What was that? Um. I mean, in, in in a situation of mother nature, it's one, of course, that we can't predict. But in a game where you have that momentum and you are going, how much, especially today's part, played in sort of dampening that um, sort of uh, run that you had? And how do you sort of click the switch back on? Or how did you sort of click the switch back on um, for a play, uh, to, especially to the players, especially in, in a match like this? With high rank, yeah. the The most important thing when you play against the North Africans is uh, ball in play time. And uh, when it's a forty five minute half, you've got a bit more of an extensive ball in play time, or a greater chance to have a, a more extensive ball in play time. And. Um, then you consider also altitude because that was something that uh, we knew was in our favor. And altitude is not heat. 
many people make the difference between of course i think maybe even playing at three o'clock would have made a significant difference and even if it was one percent difference but we had a lot of things going against us and uh, that's that's life that's football but now we've got to pick ourselves up uh, we've got to pick the players up i'm i'm, I'm humbled that uh, the chairman of the club or has already addressed the players and tried to pick them up in the change room because it's a it's a down spirited uh, change room you know the players feel uh, feel like they gave it their all and 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 rightfully so because i thought they were amazing today i think they ran more they 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 tried more they put a lot of volume in and around the box um they created more chances and you could feel that as it was going uh, even especially with uh, with Mudiba's chance that it the the crossbar and then comes back to to rebound to lodge you then have a feeling that you could play for even another 90 minutes and you pro- probably won't score not not only because of the 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 maybe sometimes the decision making inside the box and all these things but also because of the excellence of the of the keeper but we we did our work we knew that they, they there are spaces, especially when they when you play a four three three like that with one six and two eights, and you want to defend in a low block. There are spaces that you can't defend, and I think we exposed those areas very very well. But we just we just we were just not ruthless enough in uh, in in taking in taking our chances from those areas. And those areas could be maybe from the fullbacks. Uh, and you saw how we had possibilities with Divine. Uh, maybe it is in front of the defensive uh, midfielder or on his pockets. And you saw how many balls fell to Marcelo, how many balls fell to Lucas, how many balls fell to Obas. Or maybe it's even spaces behind the defensive line, you know, when when, when the certain situations arise. But, uh, and you can't, then they struggle to defend those areas. But we just, uh, it was not our day today. But I'm very proud of the players and I'm very proud uh, to to be their coach. I love them and uh, I'm very proud of, of their sub- service, of their efforts and, and maybe it's an opportunity also to apologize to the Sundown supporters for for a bad result and a, and a result I'm sure that um, I hope I hope they feel that uh, we feel it just as badly as they feel it. Thank you, Coach. Good evening, coach. Good evening, sir. Uh, fun luck on the result. Uh, Thank you. I think, obviously, you know, there will be a post-mortem of, of this football match. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, you look at your bench, it looks like it was also very strong. I mean, a man that really likes to dance and dance in these type of situations, Tembazwani. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there any particular reason why you, you start on the bench, Tembin Gosilot, you know, there's been a flashes of him over the last couple of weeks. Is there any particular reason why you started both of them on the bench or you just tactical and uh, did you speak to them in regards to making that decision oh yes i speak i I, one of the most important things about what i've learned from from some of the many or maybe little discussions and things that i read is is how important communication is you know and i I speak to the players a lot Uh, so i did speak to lodge i spoke to shishi but i also spoke to Bongani Zungu because he also has just come back. I speak to Tash Rik because T- Tash played well and uh, scored a goal last, last game, but he's been struggling with a stomach bug. Uh, I spoke to Tapelo Morena, who I thought even when he came on was very good today. Uh, he was good in the last game as well. Uh, Modiba, Modiba also has been playing well for us, so I had to speak to him, but I speak to them. I, I talk as much as I possibly can. I explain the reasons why they don't always have to agree with the reasons, but they know that they've got to respect the reasons because I'm the coach and I have to make the decisions. And sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. And uh, unfortunately, in this game of football, it's the result that determines whether you are right or wrong. And in this moment, because we lost and we are out of the Champions League, 
well, I was wrong and I put up my hand and I and I say I was wrong and therefore I take full responsibility for it um, and it's it's uh, it's it's something that I have to shoulder as the leader uh, I can't hide no chance and uh, of course face the face the scrutiny the the negative uh, reactions that will come after and that's only normal because of the nature of this business so um, yeah that's 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 just that uh, good morning coach good morning sir uh, coach um i mean obviously you know, i'm not privy to you know knowing how you feel deep inside but um you know, I just want to take you back to 11 months ago we were, oh, yeah. we were here and yeah. after we did and, uh, you know, at that particular time you looked very, very distraught and, yeah. um, but now you, you, now you cut a, a little bit of a different demeanor. Um, yeah. I think you are, though it's profound disappointment, but you are handling it very well in terms of the way you look. Yeah. You don't look like that time. Yeah. Is it, is, is it maturity, um, experience and also um you know also i want to ask that you know do you still have that drive of saying i want to go back and you know you know ultimately we'll get it right well i've made a promise to the sundowns fans that we will win it and i and i am a man of integrity um i want to be at this club that's why i signed a four-year contract even though i and and people may may think that okay, but it's, uh, even though I had bigger op clubs in in that stature, making making offers, and I chose that I want to stay at Sundowns. I didn't choose that because I was emotional. I chose that after lots of deliberations with my family, with the club, with the Mutsipe family, and also with the players. And so uh, my intentions are to be here and to try to do my best every single day to deliver the Champions League trophy. But of course, football is a, is a game that is uh, business and result orientated. And I don't make those decisions about uh, which, which coach stays or which coach goes. Uh, but while I'm here, the club will know that I will give 150%. And if 150% is not good enough like today, I will give 200% the next time. Um, is it experience or is it maturity? I, do, I don't know what, what it is. Um, but I, I also have an understanding that this game of football can be very cruel. I've experienced it before. Uh, I've been through a lot of failures in my life. That's why I appreciate success, no matter how small it may be. Uh, because I know I'm not I'm not guaranteed to succeed because I've failed so many times and uh, this is also one of those failures but it's a failure that I'm prepared to take and uh, one of the things that I think South African football forgets which which sometimes South African football remembers only when it suits them is that I'm only 37 years old and that I am only on my first year as the head coach of Mamelodi Sundowns. But I've been here as a co-coach now for three years. And if you count those three years as a co-head coach, we've won how many league titles? We've won the Netbank Cup. We've won the, the MTN8. We've won a continental trophy. And so when I look at my tenure in my return to Sundowns, I myself feel very proud and privileged that I could contribute to this football club. But as I said, it's uh, it's part of the process and, 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 and I'm here to serve. Like many of us in the technical team, we, we do everything that we can to try to, to, to help the club. But at the end, for sure, there needs to be a leader. And the leader is in front, in, 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 in bad moments especially. Uh, and he can take the back seat in, in the good moments, but in the bad moments, I've got to be in front and I've got to take responsibility and and shoulder the blame for for the Champions League exit. Coach uh, Lorenzo, sure, Lorenzo. I, I do be the person that compares Europe to Africa and everything, but you, you 
you well versed you you watch a lot of sure, sure. people um <laughs> there's been many times where world class coaches lose their job because of this champions league and you cognizant of that um does that cross your mind that potentially because this is the ultimate objective of the club that that could be possible and silver lining um in the club world cup that probably changes the landscape of mumble odisha and dance because of what that means for Af- the four african sides that go there um does does losing my job cross my mind yes it crosses my mind every day every day i i i have to prove myself worthy to be the coach of mambelodi sandals every single day but in responding to your question i can say to you two things one is i feel the support of the players i feel the support of the family that runs this football club i feel the support of senior management and that's important uh i feel the support uh of of the staunch sundowns fans who realize uh, where this club is as compared to where this club used to be and the difficulties that they have gone through with this club and how much it means to them to continue to win and to be respected on the african continent whereas in the past many teams would come here and would think oh it's is is easy to to play against and i remember sundowns losing 5-0 in a, in a, in a knockout stage of a, of of the champions league and gone are those days uh, teams don't don't play against sundowns whether home or away and play open and this is something that shows how much we've grown as a team and and how big we've become and i'm proud that today we could even try different things Uh, we could go to the sides more we could try the double underlap we could try to put balls in the box we could try the diagonal diagonal dodge we could try finding the space in the tens we so i'm happy we 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 could try a lot of different things you know today and and that shows that um i'm not so stuck in my ways i'm prepared to to do whatever it takes to try to help this team to win whether that's recognized and appreciated is not up to me what is up to me is to give everything that i can but i'm also going to take you to a situation that happened in, in not not so long ago and now in european football a couple of months ago nagelsman was the youngest coach in one of the youngest coaches to ever coach a big club like bayern munich at that time they were still in the running for three competitions they were in the running for the league they were in the running for the champions league which they still are and they were they were only two points if i'm not mistaken from dortmund if i'm i'm not and and and, and the eventual winners which were crowned were probably 17th or 18th at that time but somewhere there when uh, shabby alonso was appointed and all of a sudden thomas tuchel became available and the name and not the work of ne gailsman interested by in munich and they went to say oh okay let's change and get thomas tuchel in a few months later the league title is gone they are out of the competition which and the league title is very important in germany for for bayern they are out of the cup and now they've got the champions league which they beat arsenal in and then you find a situation where now they've made a decision to get rid of Thomas Tuchel and then made an approach to try to get Nagelsmann back so sometimes what you have you don't appreciate as much and you look for it somewhere else and only for you to recognize that what you had was actually the best thing and this is not me talking about myself and my job at the moment is me talking about facts that the teams that have had sustained success are the teams that have consistency in their leadership and in their coaching and that's a fact the most successful teams are the teams that say to them this is our coach in good moments we appreciate and in bad moments we stick together go into history the best teams uh, best liverpool teams at the moment jurgen klopp 
uh, people say, ah, but uh, uh, in my opinion, I think he's overachieved because of the level that Manchester City are at. How many times, I think two seasons in a row where they lost the league with a number of points where in any other circumstances they would have won the league. They won the Champions League because of how many years has he been there. It's the same if you go to Real Madrid. The most successful time was when they had it at Vincente Del Bosque. St stable every single year and going for it. They then had Zidane, stable every single year and going for it. Is Carlo Ancelotti staying and going for it? He could have gone to Brazil, the rumors were saying, but he was staying and going for it. Manchester City, Pep, staying and going for it. You go to Man United, how many coaches in the last few years? Very difficult. You go to PSG with all the resources that they put in. How many coaches? Very difficult. You go to Chelsea with all the resources that they have. How many coaches? Tuchel, uh, Potter. Uh, uh, you, so it's not me. It's about it's about the job that we do, and uh, and that's that. But the reality of this job is that the moment you come in is the moment you prepare to go out. And that's the reality of the job of, of, of being a football coach. Yes, uh, coach, yeah. uh, back to African football. Sure. Um, hard luck on, on the result, coach. Yeah. Yes. Um, in the quarterfinals, we saw a, um, a split that, is, that was unusual from what we've seen. 6-2 um, sub-Saharan African teams um, and just two North African teams and we thought something is changing. Um, for the eighth season running, um, it's an all-African final. In fact, an all-North African final, I think, in seven of those eight seasons. Mm. And I think they only, in the last, the, the last two teams to reach mm. the final coming from outside, it's also coming from the PSL. Mm. Um, what, what just do you make of these dynamics and um, how do you view this? I'm sure even yourself, uh, in the quarterfinals, you, you were saying something. Um, how, do you, how do you look back in, in this dominance of, of North Africa? What is behind it? Um, and is, is the gap becoming too big between North African teams and Sub-Saharan teams? Not talking more about sundowns and maybe the PSL, because you're always in the mix. But um, how do you look at this? Yeah, it's a it's a good question, Davi. Um, but it's 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 so complex. It's 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 not it's not one that you just answer with uh, one answer and it may and 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 everything makes sense. You you first have to accept the the profile of the competition, and the profile of the competition means that you play home and away. And bec because there is also the law or the rule which the Europeans have taken out now to try to stimulate the, the, the level playing grounds from a, from a technical, tactical perspective in terms of approach of the teams is the way goals rule. And so in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the Champions League in Africa, the away goals rule is so important. But then you find how how influential the the crowd is in relation to creating the conditions to support the home team and influence maybe a level of intimidation on the away team. And that's important. Whether people believe it or not but it is important it's a, it's a psychological benefit and if it could give one percent benefit it is there if you if you look at us as as announced for an example i think our supporters are only now learning how to play the champions league you can feel in certain moments how they drive the team how they drive but but they still are a group that suffers with the team but if you look at the the north african sides 
the supporters in difficult moments don't suffer with the team. In fact, they're the ones that give energy to the team to push them to, to suffer more. And they enjoy suffering because uh, in South Africa, we clap for a chance created or for a skill. In North Africa, they clap for a block, for a tackle, for, for a player that's, that's, that's on the ground bleeding. They clap and they... So, so that, that type of mentality is one that uh, players feel we can do more of this because this is what makes our people happy. The other thing is the, the distance isn't flying. So if you've got more teams qualifying from North Africa, it means you are traveling from sub-Sahara or southern point of Africa to the northern point of Africa. And then it's a little bit more less complex if you've got a lot more North African teams where if you are in the group stages, for an example, and that accumulation of fatigue in your travel eventually catches up with you in the semifinals and in the finals. Because in the group, you might have, out of four teams, you might have two teams from North Africa. That means that you don't have, in, 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 in your group, for our group, for an example, who did we have? We had Mazembe. It, that's that's a bit of a, a stretch to travel. We had pyramids. <laughs> that's a bit of a stretch to travel. But I'm talking about these things because these are things that, unlike Europe, for an example, to go from, from Germany to London is probably two hours, maybe two and a half hours, maybe. Uh, sometimes even less, depending on the mode of transport. Th that is affected. But the fact that sometimes even our schedule and our calendar doesn't go together. It's difficult to try to manage the season where you've got the objective of trying to play a league game and we were the only side left in the in the last four that had a league game midweek and no one else had m midweek games. al Ahly, I think, have played only seven domestic games in their, in their league. Only seven. The rest is postponement, postponement, so they have time to, to prepare for the games in the Champions League. There are so many dynamics, and then you've got experience. Experience of not just playing for, 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 for your club in these type of games and games of consequence, but also playing for your national team and your national team doing well and getting into the semifinals and the finals with, with the players that are coming from Mamelodi Sundowns and, or, or, or from Al Akhli, for an example. But if I look at the tide, I can only go to FCON. First, I go to FCON and I say in the last four, we had South Africa, we had Ivory Coast, we had Nigeria, and I think we had Congo. We had no North African side. I look at the Champions League and I say in the Champions League, we had two North African sides. We had a team from Congo and we had a team from South Africa. Now, there's in the two big competitions on the continent, there's a South African and there's a Congolese. So if you ask me whether or not the gap is closing or widening, I would say based on the results and what I see in, in, in the immediate, is that there, there is possibilities that we are closing the gap. But it is a big gap because, because there's football heritage. There's years and years and years of doing this thing. And the more you do something, it's, it's like life, the more you do something, the more skilled you are at doing it and you know what works and what doesn't work and at times this is what we are trying to get through to say what works in the champions league what doesn't work in the champions league and that's not only about the tactics that's about the preparation that's about the choice of time what time do you play the pitch it's about how do you fly and travel which hotels do you stay in and that's why we've got an advanced group that's over the years trying to find solutions to say where we are. So it's a, it's a, it's a very broad question, which, which has a lot more to do than the tactics itself. And a lot of people will talk about the tactics and the dark arts and, and sitting back and that. I, I don't want, unfortunately, I am the, the type of human being that grew up in a family where my family produced a Jomo Sono and my family produced a KK Sono, for an example. So that's how I feel football. I feel football from an offensive sense. Uh, in the township, when we played football, the players that were admired the most were not players like myself who played at centre-back 
and just were defending. The guys that were fought for, Maslali Challenge, five aside, were actually the guys that could make the difference offensively, dribble two or three players and make something happen. And so for me, football is a game that I, I feel needs to be played in a certain way to evoke certain emotions. And when I watch it, I ask myself, would my late grandfather, Skarasono, watching that game, would he be proud to see a team that I coach play the way it plays? Would I be proud if I was sitting on top to see a team that I support, because I am a Sundown supporter, play the way it plays? And that's the first thing that I always ask myself. And so maybe that is the question is, is that enough to win you the Champions League? And so far, clearly, it's not enough. Take the last question. Thank, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, uh, shame, Kent. He's, he's, I'd, I'd rather no, 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 go. I think we should go, Titi. Well, squeeze it. Uh, you come from far, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> Co- Coach, um, commiserations to you and the sure. team. Thank you. I just, mine is simple. Where do we keep missing it? I'm saying we because we've had a Kaiser Chiefs going to the final and losing it. We've had Pirates as well going through that. <laughs> Ever since, Southern Africa is only two stars. I mean, even for Sundowns currently, you've come close quite a few times. And where do we keep losing it as the Southern Hemisphere? I don't know. I wish I knew. If I knew TT, we would be in the final. I, I really, I really don't know. And and it's okay not to have all the answers. Uh, I I spent together. In fact, I must say we spent a lot of time, Coach Michael and I, talking to to analysts of Tottenham, talking to analysts of Liverpool and asking, how do you break down a reinforced block? And uh, fortunately, they gave us so so much information, clips, ideas, notes, presentations that they have made to their teams when they play Crystal Palace and they play against West Brom and some of the tactical concepts they try to develop. And... Um, that's 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 what I can tell you is that when I don't know anything, I invest time to try to find. I surround myself with pro- people who are even smarter than myself who can give me ideas and and solutions. And uh, I can't talk about chiefs. I can't talk about pirates. I, and I can't really really talk about sundowns over the last few years. I can talk about where we are. And I can say I'm very proud of this group to do what they've done, to be so close all the time. But but it's football, you know. Um, good good sometimes is not good enough. And people expect you to have all the answers. Um, but it's okay to sit and say, I actually don't know. When I, when I read the books of people like Warren Buffett, Steve Jobs, they've gone into meetings and they've been asked, how do we improve the product? And they've said, I don't know. Uh, and and these are the most successful business people in the world. So um, I don't know where we miss it. Um, it could be luck. I, I think today we were we were very unlucky. Um, but sometimes even when you're unlucky, you also have bad luck because we also concede such a soft soft goal. And 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 as I said to you, you need you need luck for in this competition. You really really need luck in this competition because before they went to go score, we we had two very very good chances to score, and then from absolutely nothing, uh, a goal, a, a kick from the keeper into our half goes into the back of the net. But that's football, isn't it? Thank you, coach. We'll squeeze in the last one there, Kent. Thanks, T. Uh, coach, sure, can't. Uh, it's obviously not easy to. Uh, it's, you're still in a in a whirlwind of of emotions, the, the fear and disappointment. Yeah. Uh, but as soon as you get out of this whirlwind, how how are you gonna look at at the class? Because I mean, it's half empty because it's back to back losses in a semi final, but it's half full because you have to be in the semi final to lose it, and being there is also important. Um, Oh, 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 oh. What what are you what are you zooming in first on the class being half full or the empty part of it? I think I've got to f- fetch the class first. 
<laughs> and I don't, I don't see a glass in front of me. That's the, that's, that's the problem. Is at this moment in time, I am gutted. I'm probably less gutted than the players I see the change room now. Uh, they, they are very low. And rightfully so. They, they, they should feel the sadness. It's, it's, it's that we've, we've let not only ourselves down, but we've let the club down. We've also let the supporters down. So, it's, it's difficult to say uh, because football is about that. I, I look at, I look at how we, we play the game. I look at how we, and holistically, I look at my team holistically. Um, a continental final. A semi-final of of three of of the four competitions we have to play, and that's big. When last we have we achieved that as Sundowns? Club World Cup qualification. Well, a Club World Cup qualification, but <clears throat> you know how it is. Now it's bittersweet. Uh, I say it's bittersweet because you need to have won the games in the group stages to give yourself a chance to be there. Um, but yeah, as I say to you, I'm not. I'm not sure how. How and I think. I think maybe that responsibility falls on the on the club because because the club needs to look at it and say, is it half full? And if it's half full, there's a positive feeling about the work that the coach is doing with his technical team. And if the club looks at it and says the the glass is half t- half empty, there's of course. A sense of disappointment and uh, unhappiness with the work that the coach and the technical team is doing, and that's football. You know, we have to take these things. Um, but one thing I can tell you is, I am proud of this group. I'm proud of my technical team, and and I am proud of myself uh, for for the amount of work that we put in and we try to do um, for this club and serve this club. It's it's not easy, but we try to do it as best as we possibly can. Thank you, Coach. Uh, tough luck once again. Thank, Thank you, you, guys.